in the age of social media, online presence technology, it's just kind of the, the thing that eventually needs to be addressed. The idea of uh, where should Christians really stand uh, when it comes to, um, <laughs> well, online. Uh, you see a lot of people saying a lot of things, a lot of people saying a lot of um, things in a very mean way, a lot of people saying things very, well, a lot of people saying a lot of things. And so that kind of brings us to the, to the real question. Christians and social media, how, how should we treat social media? Should we be engaging in these conversations? Should we be engaging in these arguments? You know, uh, well, let's plow ahead. Before you really say anything, you need to realize that there's two groups of people that are extremely irrational groups of people. Um, and remember that any time that you are on social media and you're going to find these two groups of people say things um, very opinionated, very rudely, and they will not listen to any reason or proof or anything. Uh, it will just come down to uh, they don't want to listen. The first group is uh, religious conservatives. I, I'm a religious person. I'm a Christian. Um, but religious conservatives, I don't really consider them to be Christians so much as religious. Now, let me kind of emphasize what I mean. I'm not talking about... I'm not saying that they're not saved. I, I honestly just don't know. I don't know. That's none of my business anyways. What I do know, though, is uh, they believe more in an American religionism more so than Christianity. They're more interested than, for instance, my American rights than God's kingdom. They're more interested in the physical rather than the eternal, that kind of stuff. Um, now, these people have already decided what they want to believe, and then they go to the Bible to validate their views. Um, they're typically against evolution. Um, they are typically, um, in, but that's kind of a flip coin. They say that they're against evolution, but then they actually they believe evolution. Um, an example of that would be they say that death didn't exist in the original Garden of Eden, that there was no such thing as death. But then they believe that later, death developed, so it evolved. Or maybe you could say devolved, but still. Um, in another way, uh, originally nothing ate meat. Animals didn't eat meat. And then those animals became meat eaters, so they evolved into meat eaters. So, so they they have a lot of opinions about evolution this and evolution that, but then they actually argue against themselves by saying that they believe in evolution. So it's like, I don't know exactly why they don't see a contradiction there, but whatever. Um, the flood, no matter, even though the Bible itself says that it was not a global flood, they will stick to the to it like, like nothing else, um, you know. It, it, it was a global flood, and there's proof for it, but there is no proof for it, first off. And no, we haven't found the ark. No, just just no. Um, any, ki any kind of anything that's a new concept, and what, by, and what I mean by new concept is it wasn't something that was believed in the um, religious environment 50 to 80 years ago. Anything besides that. They get stuck in a certain period of time, typically like the 50s or the 70s, and that's their golden era, you know, and so anytime that it comes to teaching anything, it has to line up not with Christianity, not with the Bible, not with um, church tradition for 2,000 years, not with anything else based on reason or science or anything, just so long as it mes meshes with what they believed back in the 70s. Really, there's no there's no rhyme or reason. It doesn't matter what kind of proof they believe. They're typically there's a lot of them who believe in um, um, where it's oh what is it um, where uh, conspiracy oh conspiracy theories. They're real big on conspiracy theories, um, you know, and it, it just about stuff that doesn't really make sense why there would be conspiracy about it, um, like evolution or dating the earth or different stuff like that, and so they kind of just. Uh, a pointless, pointless endeavor. And then the second group is atheists. Um, a lot of times people say, well, I, I'm, I'm not an atheist, I'm a uh, agnostic. But then they actually have the beliefs of an atheist, not the beliefs of an agnostic. So uh, be aware that sometimes people are not aware of what the difference is between an atheist and an agnostic. If you're an agnostic, you're going to equally listen to 
the arguments for Christianity as you are going to listen to the concepts against God or anything like that. Whereas if you're an atheist, it's not you're not in the middle. You're leaning towards the idea <laughs> that there is no God. <laughs> So, you know, let's kind of not confuse those groups. Most people who call themselves agnostics really don't know um, what they're talking about usually. Sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll usually hit one, but eh, not, not, not really. Uh, but the second group here, atheists. Good luck. Good luck. Atheists have already decided that no, no proof is going to be good enough. They're not skeptical in a healthy way. They're skeptical in an unhealthy way to an extreme. And... Um, well, there's much could be said here. They, typically, they're going to be very prideful. They think that they have they're the next step in human evolution. They think that they they just know everything. Um, they're not willing to consider evidence contrary to their view. Anything that disagrees with their view, any kind of any of the problems that that science has in evolution that that we don't have the answer to, they'll just simply ignore it. No, nope, evolution is 100% proven. It's like, well, well, actually, no, it's not. And there's a lot of problems that we have to still resolve. Um, typically, they don't put a whole lot of thought into their responses. They'll, they'll be like, well, since I believe in evolution, that means this was produced by evolution. Well, so I mean, there's, there's really no more scientific endeavor anymore. It's just closed-minded. Um, typically, they're biased. Uh, now, a lot of the atheists that I found, maybe not all of them, but a lot of them, are either following the crowd, A, they think this is the mainstream opinion, or they've been wronged by religious people. Uh, those two themes you see just repeated over and over again, but whatever. Um, they typically uh, are hateful. In fact, a lot of times atheists will say, well, we don't need Christianity for morality, but then they go and make fun of people who don't agree with them. They call um, uh, religious people names. They all kinds of different stuff like that. And then they ignore the fact that people live long longer when they're involved in, in religious um, situations. They, they have lower suicide rates, all kinds of different stuff like that. Ignore all that because that doesn't fit with their narrative. So because atheism is the, is the next step of human evolution, ignore the fact that people actually live longer in religious environments and just believe whatever you want to believe because whatever. I mean, ultimately, if there is no God, then there is no standard of morality either. There really is no idea of good. I mean, you may say it's good, but who are you to say what's good? So once again, we, we just kind of go into a philosophical dilemma, and it's just a big problem there. But the moral of the story being that evidently being hateful and calling people names and uh, you know downgrading people who disagree with you um, is totally okay, and that's totally moral um, because they, because atheists do it. So therefore, right, because if we do it, that makes it moral, right? Why is slavery wrong? Because everybody says it was wrong. Why, why was it right before? Well, because everybody said that it was right. There's, there's no ultimate standard of what's right and wrong. You just do whatever you want. So the, you, any time that, you, that, you, that you're online, remember that these two groups cannot be reasoned with. It's better just drop it. Move on. Because they're not going to listen to a word you say, no matter what you give um, proof or, or anything like that. If you break things down, it's not going to be good enough. So remember that you are wasting your time. Just acknowledge that. Also, I will say this, that it's easier to um, in influence somebody's opinion if you're talking to them as a friend rather than down, talking down to them. Um, if you have a rapport built up with this person, uh, you – I'm sorry, rapport. If you have rapport built up with the person, uh, if, uh, you know, it, if you're coming to them one-on-one -on -one in a way that doesn't – uh, make them feel like an idiot, that kind of stuff. You, you, it's just easier. Uh, but both of these two groups of people, you're going to find do the exact same things. They ha they follow the exact same um, logical fallacies. Uh, it, it, don't don't even waste your time. So let's talk about some guidelines for social media. I don't believe that um, Christians should not be on social media. I don't I don't believe that. Um, I think that there's an overuse of social media. I think that people spend too much time on Facebook, for instance. I mean, you get up and you, and, you, and you check it. While you're at work, you check it. After work, you check it. While you're trying to go to sleep, you check it. I mean, that's just, that's just too much. That's like addiction. And uh, science has shown there's a lot of, a lot of alarming things uh, with being on your phone too long um, and that kind of addictions and those kinds of things, how it's messing with the development of our children, all kinds of different things. And uh, we would be wise to, uh, to definitely limit our, our time on, on, on screens and especially when you work at a job where you look at screens all day and then you go home and you veg out on, on in front of the couch. I mean, there, com there comes a point when you just turn off the technology. 
and uh, just sit outside for a couple minutes and just kind of unwind. Um, that's actually what these glasses are all about. Um, there's blue light that is emitted from, from screens, and it can actually cause permanent damage uh, to your eyes. And it's just things like that. It can cause sleeping problems, all kinds of different stuff. We're all, you know, just delving down into, te te into technology. And I'm not trying to say technology is evil, but uh, there does need to be a point when you say, okay, enough is enough. I mean, it's like eating donuts. Hey, okay, eat a donut every once in a while. Maybe not every day. That would be a terrible idea. But maybe like once a month or so, eat one single donut and then just call it quits and go to the next thing. But what we do is when we like something, we tend to just go overboard on it. So be on social media, yeah, but not all the time. That takes us to the dreadful YouTube comments. Boy, if you want to talk about a conversation that doesn't go anywhere. Oh my goodness. And everybody wants their opinion heard, but they don't want to hear anybody else's opinions. And, uh, you know, then they, uh, it's just kind of a, kind of a waste of time. And, uh, anyways, even if you completely answer all their questions with a good attitude, it won't matter and it won't be enough. If you answer questions, there'll be more questions. If you answer those questions, it, there'll be more questions. And it'll always be a, a thing of, of, not of trying to understand the person, but of trying to belittle the other person's views and to just tear each other down. Uh, really just not a great place to carry on intelligent conversations. The best place to carry on intelligent conversations is face to face. Um, there's not a barrier between you and the other person. It's more of interactive. And uh, there's just something that happens to us. Even science has shown us this. If, if someone touches you, just physical touch um, throughout the day causes causes better blood flow and different things like that. I mean, it just, we were made to be social creatures. And social media is actually not making us more social, it's making us more antisocial. Uh, making us have a harder time in dealing with problems and with people and with conflict and just different stuff like that in general. So it, it, just remember that the, the comments, winning a comment war isn't going to really change much. So then there's a few things that happen on Facebook that we as Christians really need to be careful of. The first thing is Facebook gossip, where you either vent about something or someone, or someone else is venting about something or someone. And then the then the, the comforters, the, the useless people always come you know oh you're honey it's just you were so wronged even though i don't know the story behind this the real story all i know is your side of it i'm going to take a side myself and i'm going to tell you how big of an idiot that person is and how they wronged you even though i have no idea what i'm talking about you know it's just the little facebook gossip things you know or like when people post something super dramatic and they say message me for the details <sighs> just stay out of gossip Gossip destroys people's lives. It destroys you. It's just a bad thing to do. Um, then there's the, the those people who feel like they have to call out people about everything. Um, yes, people online are going to say some stupid stuff. Let it go. Calling them out really doesn't do anything. It causes them to think that you're just a big old meanie. And uh, people are actually at the place nowadays where they actually cannot receive um, correction of any kind. They take it personally. I mean everything. Um, it doesn't matter how you say it, though. If they think that you're being condemning ev everything that you say, they'll read it in a condemning voice. You know what I mean? Like, if I already think that you are angry with me, then every comment that you make, because I don't have your face to look at while we're talking, I don't hear the tone of your voice, I'm going to interpret it how I already think you're, you're, you are, because that's just how I'm taking it. If I think that you're a self-righteous person, then when you say something that's even good, I'm going to ignore it because you're a self-righteous person. See what I mean? So, okay, so calling out really doesn't have that great of a, of a purpose. You're, you're going to find that people really, it's not going to fix anything. It's not going to change your opinions either. Um, then there's the, the defending yourself or others. Here's the thing. People are going to say stupid stuff, and if they're really unintelligent, they're going to say it in front of other people and start gossiping and complaining and problems that shouldn't exist. Just let it go. There's, no, there's really very little point to ever defending yourself or others. Just let it go. People are going to do what people are going to do. Um, there are some times when things need to be addressed, but usually no. Um, what happens is it just gets, starts getting into mud flinging. Now I know that people nowadays are all into mud flinging. That's that's great. Everybody loves it. But as a Christian, we really shouldn't be known for mud flinging. If something does need to be addressed, you can say it like this. You can go to the person and say, "Look, these things that you're saying are not true." And um, you know, if you continue, I, I'm I'm going to let people know what really happened, and then go to the people who actually their opinion matters. Like for instance, 
somebody saying something on Facebook that's not true. And so then it's affecting people in your church. So then go up to the people in those churches, not in a public announcement, one-on-one, -on -one, and say, look, I know that they said this, and I don't want you to think that, you know, that this is actually how it is, so this is what happened. Stuff like that. It doesn't have to be this big public display. Everybody thinks that they have to be the center of attention all the time. It's okay. None of that, but here's the thing. People are going to not like you in the world. That's okay. Really, it's going to be okay. You don't have to play the martyr. You don't have to play the victim. You don't have to drag it out and, and, and try to make them look stupid, too. Just learn to let the stuff go. Um, address the issues that need to be addressed, um, but really just a lot of times it's going to be your own hurt feelings, your own ego that needs to be addressed or stroked or whatever. So um, then there's the there, then there's a the thing that happens on Facebook all the time where you just always have to share your own opinions. You, you get these long rants that you I mean you have to scroll through. TLDR. That's all I got to say about that. But uh, seriously, uh, be sparing with your opinions, especially online. Especially online. When you always have to get your point of view out there. Um, like, I used to do this all the time on Facebook. You know, my opinion on this, my opinion on this, my opinion on this. There's a lot less people from those days that knew me back then that will even listen to me now because of always having to have the last word and always having to shoot my mouth off. I, I hope you kind of see what I'm saying here. Opinions, I mean, when you have conversations with people, that, that's, that's fine. But when you're just posting a rant and you don't care what other people think, you want everybody to know what you think. If somebody says something that doesn't agree with you, oh, well, you know, now you're mad. Well, why? Because, you know, they were being rude. No, they were just saying that's not true or whatever. I hope you see what I'm saying. So be careful not to try and offend people. There are some Christians who are like, it's like they have a mission in, in their life to try and uh, irritate as many people as they can. Uh, it's like the whole thing about being a peacemaker that Jesus was talking about. Hey, that doesn't really apply because I'm, I'm trying to get even. I'm trying to make this person feel stupid. Uh, I'm trying to rile them up. Don't try and offend people. And if you see that somebody's getting irritated, just back off. I mean, honestly. Talk how you want to be talked to. And just remember that people are typically bolder online than they are in person to person. Anything that doesn't require face-to-face -face communication, which is how humans were meant to interact with people, is going to cause them to be more bold. People are typically bolder when they're driving than when they're talking to you. Well, why? Because there, there, there's, there's protection there. There's a level of, of separation between you and the world. It's the car window. People are typically um, bolder when they're online. Why? Because there's a screen separating you. Uh, see what I mean? People typically, on over the phone when you're talking to people, you know, typically people are going to be bolder whenever there's that separation factor. Um, and anybody can talk crap after sitting and stewing about it for, an, for, uh, for all night and maybe the next day. Okay, now I have the perfect response. Typically, how people normally conversed beforehand is they would say, okay, uh, they would have a conversation and then they would learn a few things. And then afterwards, they, they would say something like this, oh, I thought of the perfect response. But then by then you realize, okay, well, I learned something from that conversation. The conversation's over. Let's just move on. So let's just look at some things that the Bible has to say about wisdom. First off, Proverbs. Proverbs tells us to make wisdom acceptable. Don't say things in a way that you know is going to irritate people and you know that they're not going to listen to. And also don't say it at a time that you know that they're not going to listen to it. Like, for instance, people usually aren't um, thinking real clearly at funerals. That would be a very not wise time to critique their theology. Just throwing that out there. Um, we see with Hezekiah where the Syrian king is coming against him and, you know, ridiculing him and his decision to follow God and all this, all this stuff. And instead, he just takes it to God. And I just want to, I just want to, this is my point in this. Don't bother defending yourself. Have a good character so that their claims will be without, without foundation. And we actually see them in the New Testament saying that, I believe Paul said that, and I think Peter said it as well. I'm not positive about Peter. About being, about putting their claims that you are somehow doing something wrong to silence because of your good character. And just remember that. Remember what Hezekiah did when he was, um, you know, reproached by in front of his entire city. He went straight to God, asking asking for God to intervene in the situation. 
a lot of times what we do when we get into these bad situations is we try and defend ourselves, we try and fight fire with fire, we try and trump their stupid with our own stupid, sh shoot off our mouths, have a bad attitude, just, it's just not great. Um, also, Proverbs warns us not to act, not to argue like a fool, <laughs> with a fool. Um, don't, but what it comes down to is what the New Testament says, don't be a lover of arguments. Don't be a lover of arguments. There's a lot of times where Christians are just that, just lovers of arguments. They, they don't care about the person. They care about getting all their stupid little one-liners online. Be willing to sacrifice yourself and your pride. There, there's this verse that I think applies to almost every single situation that you could ever come into. Um, it's in Philippians, if I can ever find Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, verses uh, 3 through 4 says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. Oh, okay. But in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. If anybody's going to be wronged, let it be you. Really, it's okay. It's all, it's all right. Some people are going to look down on you. Some of it's going to be true and some of it isn't. What are you going to do? May, go on a crusade to make sure the whole world likes you? I mean, there comes a point when you just have to let things go. Sacrifice yourself. Sacrifice your pride. Do things for other people's interests, not for your own interest. Don't look out for yourself, number one. Look out for other people. Nobody else is watching out for other people. Um, a lot of times that's what causes attitude problems anyways. And then remember that some people are going to act ugly depending on loss, stress, that kind of stuff. So um, also be willing to sacrifice your pride. It's not all about you. Um, treat others as more important than yourself. I, I read that. Love enemies more than being right. Love your enemy more than you love being right. Always be willing to learn and admit. Now, now, I want you to get this. Admit when you are wrong. It's okay. You don't have to be right all the time about everything. Always be willing to learn. When somebody says something, don't instantly say, "This is you're wrong and this is why and this is why and this is why. Actually stop and say, hmm, let me think about this. That's okay. And then also, if you are a church member or a pastor... Make sure that you are specifying that it's your view and not the view of the entire church. It's okay to have views on gun control, on school shootings, on kneeling for the flag or the national anthem or whatever. All these different things. It's fine to have an opinion on. But remember not to condone or discredit an entire people's opinion based off of how you see the situation, and then claim that that is the mission of the church. The mission of the church is this, to seek and to save the lost. That's it. That's it. When you start getting politics involved and American rights and freedoms, and you're missing the, you're missing the whole purpose. The church exists for the furthering of God's kingdom, and that is that. So specify it's your own view and not the view of the church. So just be aware of this, okay? First off, trolling. A lot of times people will do what's called trolling. That is where they post a comment for the sole purpose of trying to get a rise out of you. Um, you'll argue something, and they will just waste the entire day and weeks upon weeks arguing back and forth. Honestly, get a life. Not just the troll. I'm talking about you for arguing with the troll. If somebody is doing this, honestly, and it's going on for days upon days, just end it and move on. Interesting thoughts. If they always have to have the, have the last word in, fine, let them get the last word in. Who cares? Delete the entire post. I don't care, whatever. But don't be a don't be don't get caught into these trolling circles. It just nobody wins. Um, a lot of times people will respond without actually reading your response. You'd be surprised how many people do this. And I'm not just talking about non-religious people. I'm talking about religious people too. Um, also, be careful of this unintentional meaning. Sometimes when you write something is received that you didn't actually mean. Sometimes it's a poorly worded sentence and could have multiple meanings. Sometimes um, it's an accidental audience. You didn't mean to say it in front of that person. Like, let's say, for instance, I'm making fun of how stupid it is to be afraid of the coronavirus, and there's someone sitting right next to me who's afraid of the cor coronavirus. So basically, I just called them, and their opinions and their feelings, completely stupid. Now, granted, there's going to be people who say, Oh, you people with your feelings. Yes, there are people out there who have feelings, and there are people there who don't have out there who have who don't have control over their feelings. 
And if you think the only people that you're called to minister to are those people who think and act like you and have complete control of their feelings or don't have feelings at all, you're wrong. You're wrong. I mean, you're just wrong. Anytime that you are texting or anything like that, there's going to be an element of what you're saying that's lost, sarcasm or, or, or literal meaning, all kinds of different stuff, because they don't see your face. They don't hear the tone of your voice. They don't see your body language. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that's lost. Um, and it's better to, to handle stuff face-to-face. -face. Don't text people about a problem because you could be accidentally gossiping, and if the message goes to the wrong person, you just – well, first off, you exposed yourself as what you really are, a problem person. Uh, second off, <laughs> you just hurt somebody's, hurt somebody's feelings. I mean, honestly, that, that, that's, that's a terrible thing you just did. But also, then don't forget that then there's also a lot of just hateful speech, a lot of um, – not I'm just talking about hate speech like like race, but hateful speech, people just being rude and hateful. And you don't have to give answers to that. You really don't. You can just let it go. And there's going to be some people who always have to be right. But then also there's a lot of hate speech, and I'm not just talking about um, – I'm talking about everything. Um, there were uh, some people who were saying that some other people were racist just because of the color of their skin. Well, that makes them racist. You see what I mean? Which, let's kind of clarify a few things. I, I shouldn't say race. I think that would be prejudice. Race is where you think that one race is superior to another race. So sometimes when people say things, that's not really racist, but they get called racist. And I think maybe prejudiced or ignorant or a lot of other things might apply. Anyways, um, I guess I've probably said enough about that, but just don't let things get too personal in a public setting. Maybe just don't post pub things publicly when it's not public information, whether it's for about you or somebody else. Some things just shouldn't be kept open. Other people don't need to know about every single fight that you have with your lover. That, that's just the thing. We, we don't all have to know. Um, but there's always this, um, this element, whenever you're talking about stuff like this, where people say Christians need to have a voice. Okay, This is more an American thing than a third world country kind of thing. The argument goes something like this. Because of all the bad that's out there, we have to have a voice all the more. Well, here's the thing. Your strongest voice will be a voice of peace and gentleness, but which means not commenting on things that are divisive intentionally. Like, for instance, when somebody posts a thing for or against the president, staying out of it because you're trying to make peace instead of... You know what really sucks is when people think that they're super cool because they have a crappy little motorcycle. You know, anyways, uh, anyways, um, because posting on that wouldn't be making peace. It would be intentionally causing a rift. Now, let's say, for instance, you're a Democrat posting something uh, making fun of Republicans, and you have Republican friends, and they think, oh, I'm not welcome at that church because that's a Democrat church. But the church is supposed to be big enough to handle Democrats and Republicans. So there's that whole thing there. Um, you really can't be the voice of peace and gentleness if you only want your own agenda. The church is supposed to be united around the idea of God and his grace and his, his mission, his purpose, his, 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 his desire that all men be saved. So here's the only problem with that. Um, if you are making peace and staying out of conflicts and those kinds of things, you're often going to be overlooked because you're not as vocal. The most vocal people are going to be the people who are most noticed. Now, the temptation then is to be loud and obnoxious and opinionated because if it's the loud and opinionated people that are getting all the attention and I want to be a voice in that, then I need to shoot off my mouth and be just as loud and ignorant as everybody else. I need to always have an opinion about everything. Well, you see the problem. Well, the thing is, being a voice of peace and gentleness that abstains from the arguments and all the stupidity isn't going to get you instant recognition, but over the course of time, 
it will uh, it will win you an audience with people that you never would have had access to and you will be able to listen to what they have to say and be there for them as they learn and grow and as you learn and grow and this will cause a lot of good things in the future but I'm speaking in vague terms on purpose. Now, an example of this would be um, all these loud people, you know, they've all shared their view about the coronavirus, how it's going to kill us all. Well, okay. If it, is, if it does kill us all, well, then I guess there's not much to be afraid of. <laughs> um, but this is a great example of when our time of being peaceful and gentle is, is going to really pay off. Be a voice of calm in the midst of the coronavirus. Without condemnation. I'm not saying you're an idiot because you're afraid of it. I'm rather saying, hey, I'm not afraid of it, and this is why. Let's let, let's talk about this. See what I mean? Oh, I, I really hope you get what I'm saying about these different things. And there there's so much more that could be said. Um, oh, just so much more that could be said. Um, oof. So many things. Mm. But I'm not going to because time and place, time and place. Okay, so uh, moral of the story, the long and the short of it, um, when it comes to social media, stay out of the arguments and the fights. Stay out of the political nonsense. Just stay out of it. Be interested in people and um, treat people how you want to be treated.